Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Horsemanship Remark Show. I'm a minute late this morning, and I cannot remember if it's show 169 or 170. <laughs> My little ah, stand is a little high here. <laughs> okay, check this out. The birds are singing, and I already have daylight this morning, which is awesome. I do have a list of things to talk about, but I left it in the other room. Stephanie, good morning. How are things with your ponies? I hear I might be seeing you guys in summer. Wendy, okay, check this out. I filmed the um, bridling demo for you guys. It's just a couple minutes long. It's going to take me, I don't know, a, a day probably. I'll try to actually get that one up today. It's, it's not a long edit. So you're going to get to see the technique <laughs> of bridling for those of us who have short thumbs. Emily, good morning. I wonder if Michael's here. Let's find out. Debbie, good morning. Michael is here. Okay. Here, Joanne, good morning. Hello. Hello. Lots to talk about this morning. Yeah. Good morning. Work right away. I would, I would like to know where everyone else locates the live indication right off the bat because I am every week being like, okay, it is, I'm sure she's going, and I'm like a minute or two into the show before I can find the, oh, it's gone live and joined. Can't you just go to the Northwood Farms Facebook page? I do. Oh. And then I, I, you know, I go somewhere else, and then I come back, and I go somewhere else, and then I come back. Well, it, it might have been because I was late this morning. Yeah. But when I clicked in, you were a minute into your chatting. Oh. That's annoying. No yeah. wonder I'm here all by myself. <laughs> every, <laughs> every week, I'm like, how the heck do I find the link? <laughs> I'm missing people coming in this morning. Well, I have a few things on my mind this morning. Cool. And one of them is Heidi. Because okay. I want to hear how that went. Uh, um, it is getting better. She has gained calm because so Heidi, Heidi, Heidi was terrified of the cows. I had a cow clinic last Heidi, weekend. Heidi was... Why are we echoing? Because I had the. So she really wanted to check out and would check out. And then she could handle it if everyone was kind of driving the cows away and she kind of hide behind them and follow. But in the moment something got behind her or one looked at her, like even just turn their head to look over their shoulders, she's like, I'm out of here. So um, particularly left. And I had a pretty good connection to the hind leg overall. If you remember, she was the one that I didn't have feet at all. Like she really relied on the outside rain. And now, I mean, we, we can toodle along and follow an inside rain quite nicely, walk, trot, lope on loose rain, which was also a challenge for her. But at the moment, anything gets a little scary. I had just crazy amount of obstacles going the other day and, and a couple of helpers throwing flags across the arena and kicking the ball across the arena and stomping on the pedestal. And um, that all started with her being beside herself before eventually through all the chaos, we could kind of just trot right through there on a loose rein. So the cows were kind of the same beside herself, except more than a little spook and get the hindquarters. She it, it would take quite a bit before the hindquarters would break over. And so um, I think the hindquarter yield survived through the drama of the obstacles, but I lost a lot of quality in responsiveness related to the cows. Um, so stepping away, getting it better, the rain to foot connection particularly on the left hind 
coming back to it, stepping out of the fray, away from the mess, getting some following the rain. You know, and she's still kind of looking at the end of the arena, but eventually, um, day before or yesterday, we had a couple cows on one end and then four on the other end, and they were just kind of hanging and sitting. They're pretty, they're like super gentle. They're not trying to get back with the herd, right? And the herd, if you separate one, they will, you know, look for the others, depending on the cow. Some of them will just hang out by themselves. Anyway, so we were just trotting arcs and circles through the middle with cows on both sides. Granted, they were a long ways away. And that was big, that I could just kind of be on loose rein and she could just stay right there with me without kind of looking and bowing her ribs the wrong way. All that. But then uh, yesterday, she finally had the confidence to stare a three, you know, like three of them facing her. She's just like, I bet I can get in there and move you. So she kind of went at them and she gets her head low and snakes in there. And it's very much this, uh, um, I can move you, but a very, like I'm ready to suck back sort of feel. And it's interesting because it is actually how she moves other horses too. I think she's a very defensive in the herd, even though she kind of ends up being kind of on top. Up, the way she gets there is, is like lashing out and then sucking back. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I'm not really confident that I'm gonna drive you, but yeah. I'm gonna lunge at you. And that's how mm -hmm. she's kind of treating the cows too. And she, you know, Katie was saying she was, you know, used to be so just kind of chill and you could put her with anybody and next to any horse. And then she started kind of when being tied would like kick out at another horse. And she definitely does that here. I've been strategically putting her next to horses that aren't going to take it and just will swing their butt back and right into her and tell her, leave me alone. And then she stands pretty nice. But um, I think it's a lot of just guarded defensiveness around, are you going to get me? And uh, it's, a, it's a similar feeling to the way, even though she's gaining confidence to be able to move the cows single-handedly not like kind of hide behind another horse as they actually move the cows with these momentary like like she's actually kind of moving them herself and then now even though they're looking at her her going in there and saying i think you need to get out of here and i think i can actually get you to yield even though you're looking at me um but it still has that kind of drawn back scared of them even though i'm moving them feel to it um which is interesting because that is how she is in directing other horses so you wonder how a this is going to affect her confidence yeah. there and b mm -hmm. or, or b is it going to not just kind of turn loose and flow um, in the time I have. I mean, I only have the cows three more days um, to where she just kind of has this just across the board, like no concern for you. I can move you. We can just flow around and not have that kind of you know, lunge at you because I'm scared of you, but I, I think I can move you. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. I already extended the cows being here. I suppose I could run down and get more silage for them and have them stay a little longer. But I don't know. They were supposed to be here for three days, and now they've been here for six already. So I, 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 I'm feeding them, so I, I don't know why he would really need his cows back. But um, I feel... I, I should have told them, give me two weeks, and then said, well, I'm, I'll be done with them this week, so you can come get them. But I might have to extend it again. Morgan, good morning. Yeah, so, Michael, um, well, you guys, we were talking about the inside rain. It was particularly the left rain was not, you know, when she was scared, the, it was not going to the left hind leg. Um, but you were so on time, I noticed in that video.
video clip that you sent me. That was really cool because if you weren't, it would be quite bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to keep her bent to the left. But what yeah. happened when, when, you know, I added the, the note about then stepping her onto her front feet after she changed direction? Well, I mean, I've been thinking about that everywhere. It before, well, in that video that I sent you, the clip I sent you, which was, was of him working on having her in front of the cows, you guys. Yeah. As, as, mm -hmm. So I was kind of thinking about changing eyes in front of the cow so the cow again these cows really gentle and like they were, were if like they if they aren't yeah if they aren't pushing the cow so i have someone behind the cow driving the cow around behind me if they aren't pushing the cow the cow like just kind of will stop every bit so they're like basically creeping the cow forward that's pretty and when, much right and then you know so i've heard on both sides so it's pretty even they they go a little faster toward the gate the cow's over by the gate, but not much. So, I mean, it's not like this cow is, you know, hurrying at us, which is perfect. Cause if it was, I mean, we're just, she'd be gone. She'd be terrified. So my idea was to roll around the pen or back and forth with the cow kind of coming at us. And then we do hind quarters, four quarters in front of the cow. Well, um, found like I could get the hind quarters the front end would sweep through but then that moment you're describing where you switch eyes again like um, okay so you're following or they're following you you swing the hind quarters so now you're kind of looking at them the front end sweeps through you know pretty easily the cow is coming at you and then now it's in you know, whichever I, the moment where you switch to the other side, is it going through the blind spot in preparation for the new hind leg? And that's the moment where everything got tight. So, you know, you're saying, we'll watch for that moment where you, the bend changes, they swing to the outside and you can reach the inside front foot. Well, that's where it all fall apart because, you know, everything got so tense. So I actually, for a bit, switched to basically doing serpentines. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good so, idea. Okay, it's in this eye. Now we're coming through here. We haven't just... I mean, it wasn't like she was flinging her front end through, but it was definitely like, I'm going to have, like, no thoughts other than move my front end. Like, there's no... Well, one of them is like a bullfighting move, and one of them is a cow working move. Realistically, we should ask Gary if that's right or not. I'm pretty sure. So, so you guys, be... bullfighting, in bullfighting, the horse, like Zorro, is bred to dodge the, like, to get away from the cow, or the bull. Like, he's, he's, he's trying to let the bull buy, mm -hmm. is in bullfighting. Right? Yeah. So that's where a four quarter yield sweeping away, the cow goes by. And then mm -hmm. you, then you're supposed to stay as close, you know, as close as you can and then away and the cow goes by versus, you know, moving cows around. Yeah. I say, and that's the cow again, the, the bull. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what was interesting here is that's exactly it. I would do that hind quarter, four quarter. But then as she got confident enough um, that she's thinking, maybe I can move this, then like in the middle of the four quarter yield, I'd feel her thinking, or even the hind quarter yield, rather than wanting to bring the front end through, she's like, like maybe I can. And so then I was like, well, now I don't really want to say, well, don't do that. Let's keep going back and forth in front of them. So, like the whole deal was kind of blown in a way because it was like, well, as soon as she's thinking, let me get this thing away from me, I got to kind of let her have that confidence, you know, go with that confidence to say, get out of here. 
Um, and that's the other reason I kind of switched to serpentines to where she never really had that look at it. I mean, she would, but, and even there, she was kind of like, I don't like that thing behind me. I'm wanting to turn toward it and face it. But we're, so there I was able to experiment because it wasn't a four quarter yield and then swing right through the other side. We were kind of just switching eyes and arcs, but I was feeling for move to the new, you know, the outside so you can reach the new inside front foot. Um, I don't know, long and short of it with the cows, I don't feel like she's thinking so much about the cow. You know, and I, I can kind of move the foot, but it doesn't ever feel like, okay, and now we're going forward around sure. on the new arc. We're going, oh, there's a cow there. So we're always kind of thinking away too. And then you switch sides and she wasn't so much surging, but it was either, you know, it was kind of that bullfighting move, like, I don't know, but then a little bit of confidence that says, maybe I can turn back and get you out of here. So the whole thing's evolving as she's getting more comfortable oh. with it. And then, you know, it's gotten better, you know, someone going in there and moving the cows and they'll kind of roll out of the herd and sort of toward her and past her. And she's not just checking out there. Um, or, you know, one will jump on top of the other double decker cows were really troubling her for, you know, cause everything gets fast and a little scurry then. And, um, so it basically, the biggest help has been um, going away, making sure I have the hindquarters going back in, going away, making sure I have the hindquarters going back in. Um, you know, yesterday she was kind of right off the bat going, I think I want to move these. Um, I don't know, I'd like to get more direct about it coming through a blind spot which is what I was doing on Sunday, but it just wasn't coming through. And so I've done a little bit more kind of going at that incrementally. Um, and it's, it's not, I don't know if it's, it is a blind spot thing, but it's, it's different than a, you know, there's a horse behind me or there's a flag behind me or there's a whatever, like she's just, terrified of them anyway like and she'll follow another horse through the cows yeah well not through them necessarily as much as behind them i mean if they're well spread apart then she can go through them but she's trying to keep eyes on both of them or we'll drive the herd along and leave one and she'll be looking at it going well i can ignore these that i'm following especially because i have another horse helping me follow them but i'm really keeping an eye on this one over here and it's what will she do if if you have a little bunch of them and someone will ride through them and she can hook onto their tail? I don't think we could do it yet. Not if they were close. She'd just run up that other horse's tail trying to get. Okay. You know. <laughs> um. You know the best has been you know because they are prone to just stop and let the herd leave and hang out by themselves has been to drive the herd by leave one behind and then kind of turn the herd you know back or you know let them roll around to the left and as then you follow them to left that puts the one you just left behind in the blind spot um you know and just getting a little more comfortable with that i think it's still more than anything them coming at her but that's gotten better um like I said, even yesterday where they kind of roll around, I have, you know, Mike and a few others were kind of moving them around, milling them about, kind of separating or, you know, trying to take some of the ones that are a little bit more inclined to hurry back to the herd and kind of bringing them out, working them a little bit, keeping them from the herd. And so that all gets kind of fast and they'll kind of run toward her past her and she's kind of like but she hangs in there a little bit better um so i don't know it is a blind spot thing and i know like the obstacles a lot of that was blind spot but with the cow 
follows its blind spot plus because she's intimidated by them blind spot or not you know like you're getting a horse used to the flag they're scared of the flag if you put it through their blind spot of course they're going to be scared of the flag because they're still scared of it kind of all over um so you know it is it the cows or is it a blind spot and you know, once she's really, really truly good about the cows around her is it going to be as bothersome for them to get her you know no a, no no but <laughs> no will, will she be totally fine with it no so that's why i feel like the blind spot is kind of still that that trigger spot sure but i think the main, main thing um i'm watching for yesterday and then today i'll be looking for is them kind of coming at her with increasing amounts of intensity um and her not feeling like she needs to flee the scene. And then going through them at ever increasing density, or not density, but proximity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. We need to have that continued uh, yeah. report. Mm hmm. We'll see what well, like in the next couple of days. Yeah. So uh, one thing. So did you watch the Hope videos? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. We talked about that. Duh. What do you think about doing something like that with her? Uh, so let's just tell the people. <laughs> so I'm because I am on this kick, you guys. <laughs> Uh, it, which is very interesting to me, just re coming on so strong with this setup. And I'm calling it hooking on, but I don't really like that at all. I was hoping that you guys would help me come up with something else, even though it is hooking on. So turn the horse loose <laughs> after you've done your groundwork, like after the horse is prepared usually although yesterday i did not do that or day before yesterday i have to tell you about that uh, because it was it was a, a rescue horse that i just went to have a look at and help with and i didn't have time to like fix all the groundwork and i really needed to see what was going on so anyway turn the horse loose basically with the general idea that we we do want the horse to be able to hook on to us but there's so many more ingredients for instance changing eyes mm -hmm. through the front towards me and if you have to push on an eye being able to do that so that's that would be turning the horse away from you and how the quality of your transitions the qualities of your change of direction how straight the horse comes on and that's one of the things that is so huge if I didn't, if I didn't have the experience of watching Gary do this over and over again, I would not have figured this out. Just bottom line, because when you make a Gary's corner and come straight on, that's what unlocks the top line and puts it together with motoring forward, so turning loose laterally, but then the coming forward is so key so yes hooking on but also the lateral and longitudinal flexion in everything they do their ability to change eyes from the front and the back quality of their transitions Talk, talking about heidi makes me think about all the things we can observe when a horse is hooking on on are they rushing at the person to escape the whole situation? That's possible. Like mm -hmm. they can totally get to where that's a thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Your horse was so funny last night, you know, because we've done this her and I. Oh, yesterday I didn't get down the aisle to open her door 
so she kind of went by me which was fine you know there were horses around whatever but then then i like shake shook my flag a little bit for her to turn around and come back to me and she <laughs> so she goes faster away and then she stops she's like wait so, so i saw that she was gonna get to stopping right and i, and I stop and she turns around i'm like yeah <laughs> you know but then I kind of did the same thing with Zorro a little bit, but I had to put a tiny bit more pressure on him a little bit. Like, hey, because he was eating somebody else's food. And so, so it was not at all as smooth as Katniss going like, what? what, what? You know, Zorro's like, oh, you get, stop, stop shaking the flag at me. So, so the difference between all the gradients of how a horse is responding to the whole situation and how they start to operate within it. Agency. So you guys were filling you in because Julie, after last week's show, Julie O is the one that I was trying to put my finger on responsibility. That that that's the word I came up with. And autonomy were the two words. We yeah. And so Julie said agency. I gotta look it up. I should have saved it. Uh, yeah. So Julie said agency, which is exactly, exactly what I meant. So looking for the horse to feel the, yeah, to feel like they have agency. So how do we do that? Well, we have to set it up and then let them find it for a change but it's the letting them find it part that quite frankly for the person that is the challenge it sounds so simple and it is it is what it is <laughs> I mean that is exactly the deal and yet knowing how to set it up which is the technique and then feeling for when they are finding it uh, so di difficult, don't you think? Well, yeah. I mean, part of knowing how to set it up is like knowing <laughs> how much support they need, particularly like I'm thinking of Heidi um, through the obstacles, no amount of just setting it up and like letting her flow through there and, you know, rolling the hindquarters out the other side. Like it just wouldn't have got there. We could have done that all day and she would have just kind of frantically gone through and rolled the hindquarters. I mean, it took the finding that rectangle going, we're going to use the whole dance. And then yesterday we had the doors open. It was beautiful. And it was kind of the same thing. There's horses out there. There's people coming by. There's, you know, whatever all else sounds and now sights. Um, it's like, we just had to keep looking out the door and like no you gotta stay with me so setting it up and letting her find it was a lot of backing circles where she just wasn't ready and it's like no we're we're setting this up you know this so it's not like i'm just pulling on you when you have no clue but like you are thinking out the front you're not thinking about what we're doing back and arc bring the front end through move off roll behind the other way all all of this until she could go Okay, so the setting it up and letting them find it was pretty intense in terms of the amount of activity and precision I needed her to have in order to find it. It wasn't a, okay, you go out there, horsey, and search around for I'm going to wait for you Here, to connect. You're you know, never going to get it. Yeah, I mean, she'd just be like freaking out, you know, and like eventually kind of come to me, but you know, it's going to be like you said, kind of rushing at me to escape the situation and maybe finding some relief with me, but not, not ever letting go of all the things that were scaring her. So, and so here's that, the letting her up and letting her find it was different than one would think uh, when you say set it up and let it let them find it. Yeah, there's. A there's so many ways to think about that. And, 
and and so many interpretations of how that should be applied that's a better way to say it there's so many interpretations of how that should be applied and, and well what is it? oh interpretations but also differing situations well interpretations of how it should be supplied and or applied and there's so many different even if you're not interpreting it differently you know it, there's so many ways in which it needs to be applied that are not going to look anything like one another depending on the horse depending on the education of the horse depending on the level of distraction depending on the depending on the exercise you're doing so on and so forth so interpretation sounds like one's interpretation is different than another person's interpretation. it could be though of that, course. Could be yep. that as well but even one person's application yeah, yeah. yeah. That phrase is going to vary widely or out of necessity will vary widely as they kind of troubleshoot okay how do i support this horse through this gary reminded me the other day of a uh, ray hunt comment that has i think he said it's been passed around in a meme a lot perhaps correctly or incorrectly but he heard ray say it it's a great way to say it we should talk about it more often i think ray said the the human is full of opinions but the horse is the fact. Human is full of Don't opinions, the... get me started. <laughs> oh, good thing the show wasn't yesterday. So I want to read you guys the definition of agency. Because what it says, if you Google it, um, you got to go down to what does it mean for a person to have agency? Agency is the sense of control that you feel in your life, your capacity to influence your own thoughts and behavior, and have faith in your ability to handle a wide range of tasks and solutions. Probably couldn't get a better definition than that. Nope. nope. That about so Julie wins the prize. Julie should get a t-shirt. You guys, I, I'm going to put the little, the logo for the the graphic that I did for the Remark Show on a t-shirt for you guys. So, so we can all support the show. Uh, but is that not so perfect? Oh my gosh. That's exactly what we want the horse to have. Versus that motherfucking reel that you sent me. It was the wrong day to send me that reel, by the way. I'm yelling it from I'm yelling from the other side of the house. I'm like, God damn, Michael Sparling, are you insane? Today is not the Kip's like. And he gets up, he comes over, he's like, What's happening? <laughs> My dog's upset right now. <laughs> it's all right, Winnie. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> Tell the people, Michael. Oh, I don't know. I don't even remember. It was a knee jerk sending it to you. I didn't look at it very in depth, but it's basically right. well, I'll tell you it's something along the lines of horses are dangerous and you, you know, like basically you need to dominate the situation and. And how did he uh, dominate the situation, Michael Sparling? He was just talking <laughs> like there was no, no, you didn't, you guys didn't watch it. Well, the, uh, are you the one, the one I sent you the, I mean, there was sacking him out was one of the things had him tied up and was like milk jugs and flags and all that behind him and the horses just kind of i don't know i i he snubbed the horse to a post covered it in a tarp all the way over its head so it couldn't breathe mm-hmm I've heard terrible, terrible stories of tying a horse up on the ground, tarping them, and spraying them with water. Mm -hmm. Which I, I really, you guys know sometimes I get sad about these things, but I'm on the fight right now. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it is I am, I am, I'm being polite. 
but the, the we are talking about two different things, completely polar opposite things. When we're talking about the horse having agency, because hello, people, not you guys. You understand, not you guys, but I'm talking to, to the folks that would think it's think that it makes sense to snub a horse to a post and, or tie it up on the ground and cover it in a tarp to where it has to completely give up. Yeah. Okay. You understand that horse has to move itself, right? Because it's huge. So we have to solicit a spirit of cooperation so that the horse can move itself. Duh. You don't take away their agency. If you're so freaking sorry that you can't provide the horse with anything of value, go home. So Levi gets all for where he just doesn't watch enough. And he's, some of it is performative, but anyway. Um, so I was picking up Rooster's hind the other day because he was just fussing with me when I was, he's kind of got thrush and so he doesn't care for me kind of getting in there and treating it and getting all the crap out of his heel and so he just got to where he was like forget it i don't really want you to have my legs so i tied him up and was lifting his, you know picking up the hind and levi was all upset by it it's like i'm trying to help him and when he relaxes and stops fighting it it's all good but he was all why are you doing that and, you know whatever it's so mean to the horse there there's yeah. such an obvious difference in my opinion yeah between setting things up so that the horse can find it and taking away all of their agency. So Val, I, I'm wondering if you're logged in as Joanne or you guys are together or something like that. So anyway, Val says she doesn't understand um, how you're defining agency. So I think maybe I answered that, but Val, if you, if you scroll down on Google results to what does it mean for a person to have agency, you will see there that's what we're talking about yeah anyway but I, yeah what's odd the reason i bring up you know picking up rooster's hind and levi having his feelings about it but is because i think like for instance these folks you've met you know laney is it Laney or Lacey? Laney. And Laney and, you know, whoever else, they, they're they getting along with their horse or having a hard time getting along, but they're just doing their best. And then you have on the other side, this guy who has a horsemanship school and is basically just, you know, strapping That is not horsemanship. I know. Um, let's not go there. Uh, but you know, someone who's not been exposed to it will see you picking up a horse's hind leg and they won't see the difference between that. They will see you, you know, forcing the horse to do something or manhandling them because they're not if you familiar. Do it with force. Well, yeah, but they're not familiar with seeing that because it's not something that it's been explained to them or they've seen before or it's not in the context of a larger philosophy of horsemanship. So they can go, wow, why, that's like kind of a lot. And yet they can't maybe see the difference between that and something that is truly just tying the horse down. So, I mean, you, it's easy to not see 
the nuance, even though it's not really nuanced. And yet at the same time, I, th I think most who would stop and think about it could feel the difference. That's what I was going to say is it's super duper obvious when you can feel the yeah. difference. But I understand that soliciting a, a spirit of cooperation is not simple. Like, I get that. I mean, that's the pursuit, right? That's the pursuit. But if you, you are satisfied, it was just disturbing to me to watch that because um, taking away agency is is so completely missing the point and won't i don't think it will achieve anything of value at all um and i have a horse in right now that has moments of that where she she's just ready for just to suffer and it's such a shit feeling to see her or do that it's like the difference between toe it, having your child toe the line setting it up you know so the wrong thing is not the ideal and the right thing is like water you know it's like okay versus keeping the child in the basement in terrible conditions, yeah. if, 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 right? They are different, you know? Oh, uh, okay. We kind of got so, off here, but What was that? We kind of got off track here. Oh, well, well it, the thing is, it, it is on the same track in the sense that this idea of, of doing what we can to cover the subject of the horse having agency and choosing to connect choosing to hook on choosing to make some movements basically with their body you know up and downward transitions changing direction coming forward you know going backwards to change all of those things can we get that so can we for sure check it because the, the horsemen that we respect, definitely, they just do it at the colt start part of it, you know? And you guys saw on the video that I did talk about the fact that this is not something you have to do forever and ever and ever. Just, just check that the horse, like, honestly understands the premise. Mm -hmm. And they could, and then... The second piece of the puzzle, basically two pieces, right? That the horse understands the premise and that, and that you show them that it all is going to feel good to them. And to have some sort of a baseline for how they move, how they make, you know, how, yes, how they move, how they are physically, right? Like, is the horse ill because so many times people think oh is the horse does he have pssm does he have kissing spine is he ulcers like oh maybe i mean maybe but if the horse stands there fine and then you pick up a flag let's say and and the horse is like that well it's probably not kissing spine <laughs> like at least let's check right so it gives us some sort of a baseline and particularly if you need to you can check even without the saddle maybe it's saddle fit like i don't know let's find out so we get a general baseline of how the horse is physically and then show them the context in which this is all going to go down so let me add so first explain what you're talking about for those who haven't seen the whole video and don't have that as backdrop. So see how the horse is physically. Like you say, you're standing there, the horse looks fine, and then you move the flag. Now they're all wrung out or head goes up, the back hollows, whatever. 
or you ask them to move off and everything can flow or not flow and you can see if there's a little hitch in their get up or you know where there's maybe more of a brace but you can see what your baseline is as they're moving around now related to anything physical what's difficult is when and you're going oh, it's physical and that's why x y or z you got to put in the time and the effort and the figuring out how to get that horse to truly hook on mentally and turn loose in movement before you can really assess that. And that is, as you said, that is the pursuit. That is the journey. That is not easy. But you can't necessarily go one time around the round pen or <laughs> several times around the round pen, a session in the round pen, maybe. That's true or five sessions in the round pen and go, well, my horse has got this physical issue or whatever, if they're not turned loose and hooked mm -hmm. on, it's not telling you much physically. Mm -hmm. And then you might give up and go, oh, well, it's gotta be something mm -hmm. physical, mm -hmm. but you haven't really worked it out to where the horse is turned. You've given the horse a chance to turn loose. Who knows? Like you said, maybe it's something physical and that's why they can't turn loose. But have you spent enough time to really give the horse a chance to turn it loose? So it can. Here's the first thing. It's not actually physical. First, first thing, you guys. How herd bound is your horse? Because mm -hmm. your horse is herd bound and obsessing over the herd to whatever percentage. How can you see if they're sound or not? How? Yep. Explain that to me. I mean, unless it's super obvious. Well, and too, I mean, I've even said this when the vet's there to do a lameness exam. It's like, how can you even, I mean, they do what they can, you know, with the horse they have in front of them. But I asked their vet the months ago, like, how do you even assess lameness on like the small scale? Like there's a slight being off or, or like the horse is dead lame. Okay horse can be totally out of balance or whatever and you can see it but if we're talking there's a little bit of a stiff you know maybe something small in the hawk and we're trying to you know should we do injections and it's more subtle how can you even tell when the horse is trotting around you with the shoulder in totally out of balance bowed to the outside you know, maybe tail ringing maybe ears Just pinned whatever trotting off the street how do you, like, if a person, if you're, like, doing the trot, and the horse is all over. Yeah, prancing, or, or you have to chase. Or, yeah, yeah, screaming at their friends or something. Yeah. So, yes, you're, you're right, in the sense that it's all very well and good, good to say, get them hooking on, get them flowing, get them changing directions smoothly, get them coming to the inside, as Gary would say, you know, um, if you don't know how to do that, yeah, okay. And that's partially why I'm a little bit obsessing with this and really want to get this across so that we can, first of all, so that we can observe the items that we need to shape up so that when we're riding even if you don't, don't do the hooking on loose it's that's okay just watch the videos so that you can kind of see what the bits and pieces are that we want the horse to do when we're riding and we want want it to be as if they are free as if in the rectangle they are moving themselves. Yeah. So these girls have a comment. Um, Julie O says, I have a horse friend who believes that I use a rope halter so that I can hurt a horse into doing what I want. Um, well, Julie says, she only sees the equipment and not the proper use of it. That's pretty uh, much why. What? I mean, that's pretty much why there's knots there. Not to hold the halter together. <laughs> <laughs> hurt a horse yeah i mean i don't you know do what to put, say put some sheepskin on your, your <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I don't it, it, I don't know what to say about that. You know, it's it's remember from Buck the movie, you guys, that part where he was trying to encourage the gal to like use the flag, like swat the horse with the flag, you know? And um he he was like, It's like whipping him with a sock. <laughs> This is this is getting an idea across. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, you guys. You help me come up with something to say to that. I mean, I don't think we can relate to those things. And there's certainly a whole batch of people that, that just are not in this part of this conversation, and that's fine. It, I guess it's just maddening, especially I've been, you know, around a lot of horses lately and I'm getting more exposure than I heretofore have had. Is that the right way to say it? Thus, late, th thus far, I have more, this is more exposure, surely. And it it's such a misery for people too, <laughs> for people too. But now, but simply, this is a good example. Horses at the rescue in desperate straits because they're herd bound. Okay. That's solvable. That is so solvable. And normal. Totally normal. And you can have a horse that's so unherd bound and so hooked on and so amazing. And and you and you don't even have to think about it. And you put them in a herd for a year and they're gonna be herd bound. This, and you get them out, and hopefully they'll have a little bit more, you know, to dig up where they can get hooked on quick, more quickly. But they will be herd bound if you. But it, it is a horse. It's totally doable to, to use the antidote. So it's just, just, it's just sad. It's just so sad. And especially the situation that we're in right now in with the, how many horses we have in this country. And it's the, the, the problem is going to compound itself every year because of the amount of horses that we have per person. The amount of horses that we have per person is compounding. Then you have a lack of understanding, which leads to conflict, which leads to horses getting discarded and people getting out of horses, which compounds the problem. So we can do one main thing, and that is be, good, be a good example, be excited about our horses, we want to encourage other people, you know, to to get into horses and be able to have fun and stay in horses. And I think the to the degree that we can do that, I, I guess that's all we can do, Michael. I mean, it's an overwhelming situation. It really is an overwhelming situation. But we just, just, I don't know what else there is to do, you guys, other than just just keep on, you know, one, one horse at a time, one horsemanship challenge at a time, meaning each time we do it, <clears throat> we get a little bit more, more educated and can be more effective. You could just start teaching people about why rope halters are so effective, and those, especially those ones with four knots. Uh, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, why, so what? I don't know why the sarcasm that I usually use off the show is coming out on the show today. <laughs> and people get a taste of, of the real fun, Michael Sprung. So, a couple days ago, <clears throat> I went over to help my friend Allie have a look at one of the horses at Harmony New Beginnings that has been returned multiple times. And 
I videoed it for you guys and edited a short version for YouTube because I need feedback back from, from the audience. So this is not the secret project, but this is a, a little tiny bit of like warming up the audience a little bit. Plus, I really want to help these horses. And I'm always thinking like, what can I do? I mean, they're eight miles from me. Um, you know, and I just keep thinking, I think about those horses all the time, all the time. Like it's an, it's just an overwhelming deal. So the rosy video, so you guys can have a quick look will be up hopefully later today. I just need to get it approved. It's, it's edited. I finished it this morning. So what I did, Michael, what kind of horse is rosy. Something. Okay. What'd you do? Just kind of a mutt. I mean, let's not get on the topic of misfits because. Well, if we're not going to, I'm. I'm well, I'm just. What'd you do? Drop so I, I just went over there, and it was a little bit a situation of like, okay, well, let's saddle her and do some groundwork and things like that, and then I had an hour, you know. And she has great footing and a nice little round pin there. So the it was a situation where maybe they didn't really know what was going on with the horse because she seemed so tense all the time. But this, she was treated for ulcers and checked for ulcers. She's clear, you know, all the things, all the physical things were off, off the table. So I was just like, all right, well, let's just turn her loose. Let's just turn her loose so that we can see what's going on <laughs> because of the, because there's plenty small enough space. It might as well. Uh, don't need a halter and a lead rope really at, at that point, probably, you know, and she caught her and led her in there so I could sort of see that. But that was, was so interesting to me because the horse just unfolded. like you would expect any other horse to I mean, it's not different it's the same just turn loose or what do you mean unfolded well in herself you know going from just being tense and looking to the other horses and and you know all the normal things but we just go about our business just the same thing i did with hope right you know right away what should I do? Can you help me? Are we friends? Sure. So you guys are going to see that hopefully today. And, and, you know, then if you can share that video around, that would be great because I would, I would just love for her to have a home. She wasn't even adoptable as a pasture pet. She's just kind of not in the rectangle enough to be handling, you know, to handle her. And we got to settle her so that she can find the piece in the rectangle so that at least she's fun to be around. Probably really fun little riding horse. You know, she's right up my alley. She reminds me of, of Vivian a little bit because because she's a pretty cute little mover, but, you know, super tight top line, so really contracted neck, naturally kind of a long body. Oh, a little cute size, Vivian size, about 14 hands-ish. So, anyway, what? What did you see? Do we want to talk about the that ho the hooking on thing at all, or or what you saw? Well, I guess I'm just, you know, related to this horse and the whole idea of turning him loose and seeing what you have. Kind of still a little hung up on unless you can get them to turn loose to that situation rather yeah. than just feeling chased around. You still don't know what you have. One hundred percent. And There's another... it's not going to help the horse. Like you say, she just kind of, I don't remember what the word you use, but like melted into it. You're like, wow. Well, unfolded. Unfolded. So is that really going to work if you aren't feeling supportive to the horse, aren't feeling no. like they're being helped? They're just going to wing around on that side of the round corral, still looking for That's their right. body. And you interject yourself, and then they're like, whoa, you're more of the problem. And then you're just going to back's gonna stay tense and she's gonna look just as overwrought as she might have that's right where else so it's 
a nice, easy answer, but it's not an easy answer. Okay, so tell me, do you, I'm gonna do this anyway, but I want some encouragement. <laughs> I feel like showing this with lots of different horses, and when I say lots, you guys, I just mean like five or six right now. It's the same thing that we do if we get a wild horse in the pen. Like, you have to do it like this. Even if you rope them, you're still doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So just because the horse is not wild doesn't mean we don't want the, those keystones in there. And it's like, so showing it with a bunch of different horses so that people can relate to the body style, relate to the reaction from the horse when you first start. I understand what you're saying, Michael. That's not necessarily going to magically cause someone to be able to do it. And I, I have been thinking, you guys, about how to describe or to set this up in a way that it could be like, okay, if you've never done this before, these are the steps, except for once again. How to make it accessible. Yeah, how to make it accessible, but you can't can't just boil it down to like a technique right so i'm going to talk a lot about the philosophy so back to the hope video can you give me feedback or you guys give me feedback on that did you have questions did i explain it because i'm doing more of these seriously uh that doesn't mean we're not gonna have riding and other things we, we will for sure um but I just happen to have a whole a whole spectrum of horses to look at right now, and it's so valuable, I think, because you got to think about the same thing when you're riding, the same thing. So you can observe, remember, compare to what you saw, what you what you feel with your horse, what you're feeling when you're sitting up there. I think if you were to try to explain it to folks, I think the biggest question I run into when I'm helping folks in the round crawl is when do I let the horse come in and when do I say, oh, keep going, either because I want you to turn loose to the movement or a little more or you're not coming in in a turn loose manner or you're just assuming come in and you're not you know you're just kind of getting stuck on me in kind of a i don't know what else to do since you know and i think you did mention at one point like you kind of want to this is the way i said at the beginning stack on a little bit of yes i do want you to connect don't get too quick to say i want you to get out there and maintain and maintain and go until you turn loose it's like go yes i need you to go but when you're thinking in and wanting to connect i'm going to make sure that idea is encouraged and not make you feel wrong for that and but then yes we're going to go so I, I think there's a lot of uncertainty around that mm -hmm. that um when people try to accomplish getting the horse turned loose like you had hope doing or like we're talking about here, a lot of those questions come in, um, how to get there, which it is not a, you know, here's the technique, but this is, you know, one of the, the primary questions that's gonna come up is, you know, how do I know when to send them out, when to, you know, when are they hooked on enough to say no, but keep going or like starting to hook on. And then when you do say, no, I need you to keep going and they get worried, you know, well, this is kind of the other spot where it's like, okay, you need to come back to not having the horse feel like you don't want them to be with you to where they're kind of just just getting stuck out there thinking I just not supposed to look in because you've sent them away maybe with not the best feel a few times or they thought they were had the right answer and then you're like no keep going they're like oh taken back by it and all this sort 
you know, these sorts of things. I think that's uh, where people start to panic that they're doing it wrong or making it worse or not realizing you are making it worse because that horse is not feeling like there's room to connect anymore. Um, so. And that's where I guess I having coached a lot of people through it. I think that's where people are going to get a little, I don't know, frustrated is the right, right word, but feel a little stuck in trying to get them to turn loose the way Gur do, you, do you think that has to do with the fact that there's not enough o of an overall picture um, picture of, of, like, it's not just can they turn and face you, can they come to you? Mm -hmm. So, so understanding well, that and understanding like, okay, there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to be adding in here, looking for. So, yeah, yes, because, you know, <laughs> I mean, not as much, maybe the, the folks that are with, you know, following the show every week and here, you know, asking questions, offerings comments and with all that but boy you get people to the clinic you're like well do you guys want to do some work in the round pen like it's here and you know it's maybe something and how many people are just like well i've never done any of this or well, i've kind of done a little of this and it's like clearly there's there's really no connection to the horse they just go out and they go around and then eventually they come in and there's no feeling back to one another in it there's no, um, so uh, all that to say, I think showing it would be helpful for, you know, just lots of examples of it, good, and some talking through it, good for someone who's not done it to see, you know, this is what we're looking for here, especially if it's pointed out, these are the qualities we're looking for, as well as those who have been working at it or you know are have the horse feeling of them a little bit more whether because of what they did on the land of the lead rope or having done a little bit in the round pen before the horse is feeling back down a little bit but they're a little bit stuck in getting it to turn loose so i think the just, just the examples will will maybe kind of filter in and help people um maybe across the board if they're interested in being, you know, tuning in and thinking about it, if it catches their, their attention beyond just, I want this quick fix or the technique or whatever. But I think um, it can give the target a clear, a clearer picture. Getting to the target is I think the, the part like how, how do you help someone get to that target because like said like you said it's very much um it's not it's not easy because it's not a technique it's the philosophy it's a feel it's uh you know I, i've said quite a bit recently to to folks the you know I, of course, the release is the important part, but the release being a, a feeling of, yeah, you did a good job. Whether that release be, you know, we're stopping, you know, you're facing up, you're, you know, coming in for a little scratch or a little rub, find peace, you know, with a, a pause in the action or in motion, the release or the peace is you kind of having for lack of a better word, or just saying good feelings toward your horse, being like, yeah, I like that. That feels good. If you don't have that in the round pen, and it all just feels like pressure this, pressure that, and then pressure just goes away, but there's no point at which you're like, oh, good job, you know. Like, even energy up, energy down, if people are just flat because they don't know but the importance of that, and don't know the importance of like, you know, I mean, 
yeah is it's just additionally the the thought that i'm having as you're talking is a, a per person let's say they're you're studying with you or, or you know studying with me or, or whatever they the groundwork we should we should have all of this stuff in our minds from the groundwork we don't have to see it right away in the most subtle application of all yeah. right like the the basic abc mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for when we turn a horse loose yeah yana gary's corner like that's it so we should we should already it's it's very possible I won't say we should, but it's but it's totally doable for uh, a person to learn the bits and pieces and the flow. Mm -hmm. Then when we get to the round pen or whatever, I mean the round pen. If you your groundwork really nice, the round pen is almost counterproductive because it doesn't give you enough feedback you know um but, but whatever let's just say we're gonna do it in a small space it shouldn't be foreign at that point ideally it, mm -hmm. it's not foreign it just double checks what's really going on whether or not the horse is doing it on their own and then if the the center of the rectangle is not enough of a sweet spot is is not there's not enough draw there it will help to solidify hooking on in the rectangle so you don't have to start i'm just saying difficulty level high when when you start out with nothing and then it depends you guys on a wild horse way easier way easier because they're dot like they're, they have nothing oh. muddying the water and they are zoned in on everything. You don't have to worry about them paying attention to anything other than you. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. You keep talking now. So on a horse that is, um, well, has a lot of garbage in there or a lot of experiences let's just say a horse that has a lot of experiences good and bad i think the difficulty level goes up because they have some, a lot of confusion right as to what's going on but once again i, I don't think it's beyond reach is what i'm saying and I, I don't think it needs to take 10 or 15 years even though it did take me 30 years but I don't think it needs to take everybody that long to get get such a, an impactful life changing life changing for the horse and for us. I think we can get to that if we truly understand what we're what are the valuable things that we get out of high quality groundwork that we can show our horse in high quality groundwork that relates to riding then we ride with quality in our dream right right and make sure we're tending to if our horse is herd bound or not and working on that all the time then when we go to check it it, super handy right let's let's see if the horse has a saddle fit issue let's see if the horse is lame let's see how the horse is moving overall where we're starting gymnastically and we can also have the added benefit of of solidifying the hooking on that's i've seen gary do it keeping people safe in cold start buck does it hello they both do it in different applications. I've seen Gary do it with some really scary horses, like a single person in the round pin, where he gets them so hooked onto the middle, so comfortable, so um, sure about where it's going, where it feels good. Not the absence of pressure, 
but where it feels good, then he can put almost anybody on those horses. It doesn't really matter. I mean, hopefully they can ride, you know. But similar situation at a buck clinic where a buck flags all the colts and gets them hooked onto him. And then, well, what I always felt good. And I'd crawl on and be like, pet him. Yeah, the horse is <laughs> way. They'll, they'll be. Yeah. So you, you follow what I'm saying, Michael? I think, th but, but here's the thing. If we're doing groundwork that does not relate, and if we're doing groundwork, so doesn't relate to riding, doesn't relate to hooking the horse on to the rectangle, doesn't relate to the herd bound antidote. Well, yeah, then difficulty level a thousand, especially if you think round penning is getting a horse to turn and face you or getting a horse to follow you. The other thing. Or just getting them comfortable, stop bucking with the saddle or something like that. No. Yeah. The other thing I find quite frequently is the the round pen um, gives the horse more agency where um, sometimes just having the lead rope on, you can contort the horses going around because either A, they have kind of a pattern of pushing into that, or you've been working so hard at things that haven't connected to the horse's feet, perhaps, that the horse kind of is sort of not being muscled into it or manhandled or whatever, but there's like a disconnect because there's there you're in the way of them moving their own body virtue of trying to communicate and not being quite effective in what you're trying to say and then you turn them loose and well one you might quickly learn the truth that they're and maybe you knew this already that they're like yeah i don't really want to be here and that's kind of why i was maybe looking to the outside when i was going around you or like you could tell mentally they're like not really with you but you're trying so hard to get them to come with you and then from there you have like you're forced to figure out how to woo that horse into hey let's be together without trying to without the ability to make anything happen and i think in a lot of cases having struggled with the groundwork taking the rope away from someone and saying now figure out how to help that horse find you or, you know, let's get a circle and see, like you said, how this horse actually moves or can move if they're thinking about you when you're not trying to, you know, get it to happen. Mm -hmm. And probably there's, there's a, or there can be a lot of value just in revealing pieces of the puzzle by taking away you know, all the things you're trying to do with the lead rope. Yeah. You know, in other words, it's just, it's just a visual cheat a little bit, just so you can see more of, of what's going on. Yeah. I, yeah, I think. Uh, vi visual cheat. That's not a little. Uh, 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 cheat is not the right way to say. It. It's an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. For more information, I guess that's yeah. that's largely what I'm saying. It's there's there's more information so that you can generally be like, okay, these these are the the bits and pieces that we're aiming for. So I think. <laughs> I mean, this is how I learned it. I learned it by, of course, playing with horses, but also watching it done with a super high level of skill so that I could, and yes, I watched Gary, but I got to watch the horses 
as he as they were changing and as they were shaping up so i think i would it would be valuable to me to get to see it with so many other horses and it's interesting to me michael that it only makes logical sense that if if you were to run a wild BLM horse into the trailer, dump them off in your round pen, a person, you, a person would not expect to be able to go manhandle that horse into doing things. You just wouldn't, you, you know you're, you're going to get hurt by doing that. You can't pin them in a corner so that you can get a halter on. Like, well, I suppose some people do try that, but I mean, you're going to get hurt. And people know that it's it's way more obvious but if we but so if you're doing a good job with wild horse then you get them in the middle so that we can start to explain how to move and get recentered right so to the degree that if our horse was a wild horse we're not going to a, we're not just going to count on the fact that they're gentle to get us by because in the end that doesn't work now well i guess the reality is perhaps it does work a lot of the time but so many problems arise and once again i'm seeing the horses that are scrubbing out you know lots of horses that you can put 30 days on and they jump meter 30s they're bred to be so compliant you know but I'm, I'm seeing the the other side of it the ones that don't make the cut in every in every discipline and on so if we don't expect a horse to be able to handle the uh incomplete data set if they're wild then i think to whatever degree the horse is not clear about how to move their body for themselves not clear that we see them as individuals and respect their intelligence and understand they can come to the table with with value that we appreciate that would be the philosophy and don't don't understand that they're moving towards a place of peace that we are going to share to whatever degree. And my horse has misunderstand it too. I realized the other day I did this with Novella. I was like, I've never done this with Novella. <laughs> She's going around. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have videoed that. You guys would have chuckled because she has this tiny little lip is on, right? So instead of crow hopping around or any number of things she was literally pogo sticking around and and right head in the air tail in the air all of her feet were tight so she was bouncing off the ground <laughs> that's so funny but i mean i'm like i'm just saying um i wouldn't do it like that <laughs> So she's changing, you know, she's changing, but I'd never even seen her go around with the tack on her own. Just because my round pen wasn't available when I kind of started her. And so I just didn't do it that way. Uh, I won't make that mistake again because it was so valuable. Yeah. Why not? And it's not, like I said, it's not something you have to do every day. Or multiple days after you, you, you do however many days it takes to get it working, and then don't wouldn't you agree? And then that's it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to just see gymnastically, hey, how does my horse look overall? Okay, great. But it's I don't think it has to be part of the regular program. Do you? No, I mean same as anything else. So you check it out, and if it checks out you're good mm -hmm. and you're not gonna 
go through everything every day for the rest of the horse's life. Right. Yeah. So we are almost out of time. I wanted to tell you I did buy the marshmallow. I knew that. And yeah, so Michael did all that. I all rolled our eyes at him. Yeah, I know. But I was, so yesterday was the first day and he was tight again. He was, he, well, he was, I told Corey, I'm like, something is different in, in a good way. Like I was starting to see some of the pieces more overall. He was showing me like some of the pieces, like legit scared of the flag at times like coming up from the ground i know for sure that i did miss i i had no idea how to get the horse united with the flag on the other side of the horse i didn't know how to do that that when when i had him before i didn't know how to have the horse <laughs> thank you uh -huh. I, I did i did not know how to have the horse coming into the sound of gunfire i did not know how to make sure that the horse was understanding that if you know all those things that i learned from gary i had no idea so i'm sure i left some things in there i did video for you guys that are horsemanship insiders so you'll get to see um some of that but uh i'm less stressed out because i don't feel like I'm on this literal deadline whereby the horse is going to be screwed if I can't do it in two days or three days. It's better. It's better. It's, it's better, but I'm just less stressed for the good of the horse. And showing me the 16-year-old horse has plenty of athleticism <laughs> left. Uh, yes. So, anything else? What have you got going on? Are the pe Joanne said you, they're all coming to your place? They'll be here this evening, this afternoon, I suppose. Fun. We got, we got three days. Awesome. Awesome. Well, maybe you guys will do the hooking on. You've all done it already. Uh, it depends on how what the round curl is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got. Some all right. So. Well, anything else to say about all of that? Do you guys have any other questions or comments related to I, I would love it if when I post that YouTube video, if you guys wanted to watch it and share it for Rosie's sake, that would be amazing. <laughs> They're still talking about the, the halter so that you can hurt a horse. <laughs> Aww make the point about the bit or the so i rode frosty yesterday we, again we should start uh shelling selling proprietary proprietary sheepskin from like this new breed of sheep and just become this is where this is exactly what i'm saying is seeing the process like a person if a person have, has never seen like a horse go from trouble to trail okay well all right but come on here's oh this is so hard people can see it and i don't know if it's i don't know they are convinced they're gonna get it their way eventually or it's too intimidating to try to do it a different way or they don't think they can get it or i do know it's this hasn't come through because it's new to me and it's uncomfortable so i'm going to fall back on this other thing that i'm more familiar with even seeing it it's incredible how many times even if they can see the change they let it pass them by and i'm just telling you guys from being out in the in the wild not in the literal wild in the trenches so many horses it's so many horses and i say you know how how many times it's not like I see that a lot but 
and I don't want it. We shouldn't have, I shouldn't have brought it up and ended the show there, but it is kind of interesting how someone can like truly see the difference and be like, wow. And then not jump ball in and be like, got it. Got to help me do that. What I just saw there or help me keep going on that path of success. You started me on for whatever reason. So here's the encouragement, you guys, to end the show. This is 100% achievable. And it's so fun, really, when we, if, so long as we can be safe on the way, so we're not shit scared all the time, you know, so long as we can be safe. And I would also say perhaps surrounding ourselves with people who, um, appreciate us for who we are and and it doesn't really matter to them what we're accomplishing with our horses like if you're only around people that care if you're winning or whatever then I don't know that does make it harder for sure but it's so it is doable it is doable and since we were kids it's the the amount of information or the amount of access the access to the philosophy the techniques like the community all of that hopefully will will help and remember your study your practice with your horse and the relationship and the connection that you build with your horse is impactful it's hard to remember sometimes when we're out there behind the bushes practicing by ourselves or achieving results not achieving results your support of everybody else as they go and you're actually out there doing it is is contributing is helping Be, in, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, should that be it for this week? That should. All right. So here we go. We have one more comment. Oh, I can't see it, you guys. Okay. Sorry. Can't see it. So we will see you guys all next Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 8.30 Central. All right, everybody. Have have a good week. See you later. Bye.